Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Lai and I'm going to take you through how to edit a quick video on Premiere Pro today. So first of all, just click on New Project. You will need to rename your project in the Names panel there. Make sure to click on Browse and choose the folder that you have created earlier on. I prefer to put my uh, working project on the desktop um, for easy access. So if you'd like to follow me as well there, That'd be fantastic and you don't really need to change any of the settings and then you can press OK to begin. So what you should see now is a panel where it says import media to start. We want to click on assembly first to import all our clips. So double click on this panel and then it should bring up your Windows box. So then go to the folder on your desktop where you've already placed all your assets and then you can select all those folders and simply import. So here, what you want to do is hold shift to select multiple folders. So just make sure that you've actually held shift there and then it will import. So once all your assets are in the project panel, you may begin to put things onto the timeline. So here I've got footage, images, logos, and music and sound effects. Um, it is really key to ensure that everything um, is already on your folder and renamed and organized before you jump into Premiere Pro. So just make sure that you spend time um, looking through all your footage, looking through all your images, renaming them correctly so that when it comes to the editing process, it's a lot smoother. So just check that before you start in Premiere Pro. You'll notice see on the top that there are a few panels. There's assembly, editing, color, effects, audio, graphics, and libraries. This is the different panels for the different processes involved in editing. So in the next phase, we're gonna jump into editing. So now let's go into the editing panel. And first of all, you'll see a source panel and then a preview panel and finally a timeline panel. So what you want to do is grab your main cam footage. So I've got it here, advanced main cam. You can now click, hold and drag that onto your timeline. So this will be the first video layer and this is the main cam footage. So this is where we recorded all the good audio, the clean audio. So we're going to drag that into the timeline first. So once again, just click, hold and drag and drag and put that onto the timeline. Now you should see a preview in the preview panel and you can scrub through with the blue marker to um, go to specific areas of the clip. Notice how it says V1, V2, V3 and A1, A2, A3. That just means that there are different video layers and different audio layers. So with the video layers, what you want to do, if you want to put something on top, say for example, you want to put some graphics or some B-roll on top of your video, you got to make sure that it actually sits on a layer above your original video footage. So if you want to put some graphics on top of your main cam footage, you got to make sure that it sits above V1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the second cam footage and drag that onto my V2 layer because that's going to be secondary footage that I will cut in and out of. So we've got two video layers now, V1 for the main footage and V2 for our second cam, so our second angle there. Now this next process is synchronizing the two clips together. So in Premiere Pro, what you can do is select both clips, right click and then click on synchronize. And Premiere Pro is pretty smart. So once you've selected both clips and click on synchronize, it will look at the sound, the waveforms, the sound waveforms, and you can actually automatically sync together. Just make sure that you select audio track channel one, because that's where the clean audio is on our main camera uh, footage. So track to audio layer one, press OK once you're done. And you should see that the two clips will now automatically synchronize. So our V2, our second cam, has now synced up with our main cam footage. Now on the side, you will see a scroll, but a scroll bar. So that allows you to zoom in and zoom out of your audio clip. So you can actually specifically target areas. You can see that where we had the clapperboard, um, there would be a little spike, and that's how Premiere Pro 
syncs the two files it looks at the sound waves and it matches it up matches it up based off those sound wave forms now we don't want the audio coming through on our second cam because that is the scratch audio so that's not going to sound very good if you have both of them on so i'm just going to click on m there so you can see that highlighted in green and now it will only play the audio from the main camera source which is on audio layer one i'm currently hovering over the visibility icon so that just looks like an eye and you can now toggle on and off between the second cam and the main cam footage so you can see that it is actually synced up properly so now i'm going to zoom in with the scroll bar at the bottom so that allows us to zoom in to the video footage whereas before we were zooming in uh, on the audio clip so there are different bars to zoom in on different parts of your project and this allows you to really accurately target exactly what you want on either your video clip or your audio clip so I'm just going to scroll to where it's actually beginning in terms of the video so roughly around there so I am now going to use my cutting tool so C is the shortcut and I can make a little cut there and I'm going to cut both clips right okay so once you've cut both clips you can select both clips by just clicking holding and dragging and selecting the two clips or you could click on both and select and hold shift to select both clips after that I'm going to press delete or right click delete so I can actually cut it to where it is starting So the next phase is deciding where I need to cut uh, in terms of the footage that I don't want. So I'm going to start removing parts of the clip that I will not include in my final edit. So I'm just going to go through and see which parts I need. And once I've identified a part that I don't actually need, I'm going to cut that out. And you can generally tell in the footage by looking at the sound waveform so it's going to be pretty quiet so I'm going to make a cut there a second cut there and then scrub to the end of where this clip will end and make a little cut on both of those video clips as well like so grab my select tool or press V to get the select tool select them both and then I'm going to go through the same process of deleting so you can hold shift and select both clips or you can just click and drag to select both clips and they should be highlighted with a white box now you'll see a gap between the two clips now there's a empty space what you can do to remove that empty space is simply press delete or right click and ripple delete so that will now combine the two clips together so there is no gap so I'm going to delete the beginning part as well so it starts at the right time And now I'm going to find another part of the clip where there is a pause and I can remove that as well. And you kind of go through your entire clip to delete all those pauses that you don't want to include in the final edit. And this process can also be done prior to coming into Premiere Pro where you watch the clip and write down all your timestamps to where you want to remove. So if you have a bit of time, it's always good to spend some time investing in the phase before the editing to make all your markings so when it comes to editing it can be a lot quicker so just a little tip there and again right there what I've cut the two clips and I've rippled delete to remove that space that was created after the cut and finally at the very end here I'm just gonna trim off the clip there because that's not necessary and it won't appear in my final edit as well so the clip is ready to go now the next phase is actually deciding when to switch the cameras so I'm gonna walk you through this phase now and it's pretty straightforward what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out my second cam footage so I'm just gonna scrub through my footage here and determine when I want that second cam to come on and it's just a matter of deciding 
when to cut out that second cam footage and when I cut out that second cam footage you will be able to see the main cam footage and it's the same process with the cutting tool and then I'm going to make a little cut here and then scrub through and decide where I want that to end so here we are scrubbing through and then I might change the scene where the talent might say um so when they say um um, or uh, there's a there's a pause it's a good time to make a cut or to make a switch between the two cameras and once you've done that you can now actually take out by selecting the second cam footage and pressing delete and then what's going to happen there is now you're going to see the main cam footage so I'm just going to play through to show you what's happening here if I play through here we have the main cam footage and then you'll see v2 comes on and that will be your um, cut so the cut between main cam and second cam and it's very visual this way because you can target exactly where you want to make that cut and if you feel like you've cut the clip too early or too late you can hover over the clip um, on the side there and drag it to, to extend before or after your original cut so you can always make changes and because they're on separate layers it actually won't affect the main cam footage so that's a bonus of using multiple video layers so that's what I would recommend having v1 v2 and then making your cuts and then you can always pull or push your main uh, your second cam footage um, if you need to extend it or make it shorter. So you go through that entire process deciding on where to make your cuts and then you just repeat that step right through your entire clip. So now we're going to fast forward to the next stage because this is pretty repetitive but you just need to go through uh, your entire clip to decide where to make those cuts. Alright, so I've just gone through and made a few cuts between the main cam and the second cam and now what I'm going to do is figure out where I can put my either images or b-roll footage to make it more visually engaging for the audience. So here our talent is mentioning architecture and also human experience. So I had some images prepared earlier where it says where I downloaded some architectural photos or architectural related photos from unsplash.com and I'm simply clicking holding and dragging it onto the timeline just like you would with a video clip and I'm also going to put some footage about human experience because we want to add more visual value to what's being said in the conversation so I've got a little tracking clip here that we recorded earlier that now I can put into my uh, timeline but before we do that, I can actually drag it into the source panel, as you can see up here, and I can select the specific part that I want from that clip before I drag it into the timeline. So you just click, hold and drag, put it into your source panel, and uh, with that blue marker, you can select the in point and the out point. So to select the in point, you press I, and then to select the out point, you press O. Once you're happy, you can drag that into the timeline, and it will only be that selected part that you have um, selected in your source panel. Just a little tip here, so what you can do, I've actually selected both the video and audio layer. So I'm gonna delete that and click on this little icon. So that allows us to only drag in the visual, the video, instead of both the audio and the video layer because we only want the video here. We don't need the sound that's coming through in that B-roll footage. So I'm just gonna show you once again, it's this little button here. If you hover over it, it should say drag video only and next to it, it should say drag audio only. So if you wanna drag the video or the audio only, just click, hold and drag those little buttons there. So the next phase is I'm gonna add some music, uh, some background music to the overall clip. So I'm going to scroll back to the very beginning and I'm going to click, hold and drag this audio clip, this music track that I downloaded from Epidemic Sounds. So once again, I'm, I've clicked, hold and dragged the audio clip into my audio layer 3 so it is not affecting 
audio layer one or audio layer two. So it's a separate audio layer and that's generally where you want to put your music or your sound effects away from your uh, either narration or the voices that were recorded on set. So what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to select it all. So click, hold and drag to select all your different layers and I'm just going to push it a bit to the right like so. So I actually get a bit of a black screen there, which I can put in titles, okay? So this is some lead in time, roughly five to 10 seconds is good measure. So you can actually put some titles in there or some opening credits before the actual footage uh, is shown. So I'm just gonna zoom into my audio layer here and actually try to adjust some of the audio levels. So you can always move the panels around if you need more screen real estate by dragging the edges of your panel. So I'm gonna head over to the pen tool. Uh, the shortcut is P, which allows me to put these little anchor points on the white line as you can see on the screen right now and that is basically if I once I add an anchor point that allows me to pull the audio clip either up or down and I can put in multiple anchor points throughout the entire audio clip for fine adjustment of volume throughout my entire audio clip so I'm going to drag this down because I want that to fade in or in this case fade out so in the black space right now, if I play through it, the audio level will be um, quite normal. And then once the video clips start to kick in, uh, you can see that I have pulled the anchor point, the second anchor point down, which will bring the audio level down because I don't want that to compete with the audio that is coming through my talent there. Okay, so you can fine tune it. You can zoom in to your audio clip um, with both the scroll bars and you can really control the entire uh, process of changing the audio level. So this is again with the pen tool and clicking on the white line as you can see um, throughout this clip and you can adjust every little bit and I can add in more anchor points over time if I need more control over my clip. So in this next process, I'm gonna head over to the graphics tab right at the top there next to audio. And then we're gonna add in our title. So this is going to be our opening title just to introduce the video. And in Premiere Pro, they've actually got all these templates that you can use. They're called My Templates, and it speeds up the entire process if you just wanna add in some basic titles. So what you can see here is that I've clicked, held and dragged the clip uh, right at the beginning of my project and it's highlighted in the pink there and it's ready to go so you just double click with the selection tool to change the title so I've got my selection tool there uh, V for the shortcut and I just double click on that template that I just dragged into my uh, project and I'm gonna call it English Advanced here. and you can change the font and format the font uh, on the right hand side there the size the different you can change the font there uh, you can make it thicker so in this case I'm just going to add a little bit of style to it choose my favorite font which is DIN Pro and for the advanced I'm going to do a little um, I'm going to do some little a bit of formatting uh, make it a little bit smaller first to begin with and then add medium or bold so there is a little bit of difference between the two words English and advanced. Little tip there with the typography, um, formatting certain words that you want to emphasize with bold really makes a difference. So we're now going to move into one of our final stages and that is to add some really simple transitions. So I've typed into the effects panel so now we're in the effects panel and I've typed in dissolve. 
So dissolve is similar to what you would normally recognize as fade in and fade out. And again, it is a very simple process. You choose the video effect that you want, and sometimes you can also choose audio effects. So I'm gonna add a cross dissolve onto my title. So now it fades in instead of suddenly appears. So there we go, have a look at this, it fades in. And I could also add it to the end of the clip so it fades out. And you can do that with all your different clips where you wanna add in a simple fade in and fade out. Keeping in mind that my title is currently sitting on video layer five. So it's all separated from my original footage, my B-roll and my images. They all sit on separate layers. So that there's a clear distinction between um, which part of the project I am working on. So really pay attention to which layer you are on. And now I'm going to just put in that cross dissolve onto my main cam footage as well so that it fades in very neatly like so. So now we're gonna move on to the final stage of the editing process, which is exporting. So click on file at the top, file, export media. So this will generate the video that you can actually watch at the end of the day. A few things to pay attention to. The first thing is the format. So I've got here selected H.264. It is a compressed MP4 format, which means that it will be uh, easy to upload because it will be a small file size. The second thing that you want to pay attention to is where it says the output name highlighted in blue. If you click on it, this actually takes you to where your file will be exported. So you've got to make sure that you double check where your video file is actually going. Otherwise, you might be spending hours trying to find the video file um, and that would be silly. So please double check and click on that blue text uh, before you actually click on export. So I am going to navigate to my original folder um, where I placed all my assets and I'm going to call it English Advanced Workshop here. And then I'm going to click on desktop just to double check that it's in the correct folder because you want to be able to find the video at the end of the day. So I've renamed it. I've found my desktop folder where I want it exported. So it's pretty much ready to go. But finally, before we export, there is a preview panel there and you want to scrub through with the blue marker once more just to check that you've actually got the correct video selected. Sometimes there's an error where you might have an audio clip or a music clip that is actually longer than the video clip. And when you export it, if you don't check it right here with the blue marker and scrubbing through the entire video clip, you might actually have a very, very long part of the video, which is all black. So just double check that. Once you've scrubbed through the blue marker, you're ready to go and you click on export. Ta-da, magic, it will go through the rendering process, the exporting phase, and you'll get a viewable video at the end of the day. So I'm just gonna fast forward now so you can actually see how it looks like on the other side. Here we go, 100% success. Your video was exported successfully. Fantastic, that's what we wanna see. And we're just gonna to go to our desktop and double check that our video file is ready to go. We're gonna save our file as well just before we close up. Head over to our desktop folder. So I've got here English Filmmaking Workshop. So not that one there, so this one over here and I've got my mp4 file ready to go, ready to be uploaded to be shared with the wider community on YouTube channels, etc, etc. And just testing it that it's all good to go. And fantastic. That's exactly what I wanted. So that's it. That's going to be a wrap up for today on editing in Premiere Pro. It is a very, very short video. There's a lot more that you can do in Premiere Pro. But I hope this is a good start in terms of the tools and techniques to get a simple video together uh, in this program. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.